Ken and Teller gave away a trophy already, but they're stingy. It's going to take a lot for them to hand out another one. See if this next magician can pry it away with an awesome trick. Take a look. I'm Michael Rubenstein. I'm a retired veterinarian and a full-time magician. Some people change your life. My good friend David Roth changed mine. And David Roth is considered one of the greatest coin magicians who ever lived. And the moment I saw David work, I wanted to work the same way. Coins are something that everybody carries, everybody knows them. And when you do magic with something that somebody is so familiar with, that's real magic. I had to elevate my game to match what David was doing. And we became friends for life. I'm gonna tell you, he fooled us. David fooled Penn and Teller back in 2015. Not long afterwards, his health started to decline. We, we lost David last year. Way too soon and far too young. So tonight, I'll be doing a tribute using David's actual person coins together with my own techniques. And with my help and a little bit of magic, I think David might just fool Penn and Teller again. This show needs more magic, and the only cure is Dr. Michael Rubenstein. Recently, a friend of mine passed away, considered by many to be the greatest coin magician who ever lived. I received a package from his estate containing this box, and inside was his hand. Now, I'm not talking about his real hand. I'm talking about his other hand. <laughs> this is a genuine rubber hand, measuring a little less than a foot. These things cost an arm and a leg, but they do come in handy for sleight of hand. Inside the box was also a small coin purse, and I realized that this is what my friend used to perform his most famous trick. That was the trick where he would take a coin out of the purse, placing it into his hand, and with just a little wave, he caused that coin to vanish. And of course, it was never in his left hand, and certainly not in the right, because it was always in the other hand. Now I practiced this trick until it got to the point where I could place the coin in the hand, and like my friend with just a little wave, cause that coin to vanish. And of course, it was never in the left hand, and it was never in the right, because I also had it in the other hand. Now on the other hand, I don't really need the other hand to do my tricks. For example, I could place the coin over there and it jumps over to here. Or I place the coin over here and it jumps back to there. Or I place the coin over there and you think it's over here, but it's really over there. But hey, without a doubt, the most amazing trick is when I place the coin in the hand and with just a little wave, cause that coin to vanish. And of course, it's never in the left hand or the right because it's always in the other hand. Not this time. You see, sometimes that coin goes back to the purse. Hey, it's a magic trick. You gotta expect things like this. Now this is the exact coin that my friend would use. It's a half dollar, a 50 cent piece, with a picture, not a 50 cent on the coin, but of JFK. And sometimes my friend would place that coin into his hand, but instead of a wave, he would squeeze, causing it to change into a copper British penny with a queen on the front. Some people, though, don't believe that I could change this coin from silver to copper. They think I must have another coin. Well, of course, I don't keep one in the left hand, and certainly not one in the right. But I always have one in the other hand. And now that I have two different coins, one copper and one silver, we can play my friend's favorite game. Copper and silver both go into my left hand. One comes out, that's the copper coin, which you hold in my right hand, and the silver coin is, of course, left. Watch. Did you see anything happen? You see, I switched those coins. The silver is now over here while the copper has jumped to here. Now, I know I'm trying to fool you, but I'm gonna let you in on this one little secret. When I banged my hands against the table, the loud noise caused you to blink. And when you blink, since the hand is faster than the eye, I switched those coins. It's based on principles of science, physics, acoustics. I will do this again for you, and you'll see that at the moment when I bang my hands against the table, you're gonna have to blink, and when you do, I'm gonna switch those coins. So like before, copper and silver both go in the hand. One comes out, that's the 
copper coin, leaving the silver over here. Watch. Did you blink? I think so. Well, you know, this time I wasn't sure if you would or you wouldn't, so instead of switching them, I made them vanish. And of course, they're never in the left hand and certainly not in the right. But sometimes the copper coin does go back to the purse. And the silver coin, well, as you can imagine, the silver coin is always in the other hand. But maybe you don't want to see all that. Maybe you just want to see the trick where I place the coins in the hand and with just a little wave, cause those coins to vanish. And of course, by now you know that they're never gonna be in the left hand and they're never gonna be in the right. And you might even expect that sometimes those coins go back to the purse. But remember, in a magic trick, you've got to expect the unexpected. So why don't we just change it up a bit? They say that change comes from within. And that brings us right into the big finish, which is always in the other hand. Thank you. Dr. Michael Rubenstein. Oh. Are you the most fun doctor ever? I hope so. Oh, that's so exciting. My kids would love to come to you. Thank you. I'm a veterinarian. Oh, they shouldn't Animals are my thing. Can you fix my cat? Uh, He's got a problem. Come to my office. All right. Do you do a lot of David Roth's magic moves? Well, I'm using my own techniques, but the idea of this trick was to use props to create magic theater because that's what David did. And I think it just extends a magic trick and make, becomes more entertaining. Yeah. And did he know he was such an inspiration to you? Oh, I told him many times. Ah. And yet you still became a doctor. I did. You know, I always say that uh, uh, magic is my life, but veterinary medicine is my profession, but sometimes it's the other way around. <laughs> okay, doctor, let's see if Penn and Teller know how your magic works. Doctor, 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 Michael. Oh, man. Well, that was a wonderful, wonderful tribute to, uh, to David Roth. Uh, we, we miss him very much, but I know that uh, you were very, very close to him and that uh, he was a wonderful coin magician, as, as are you. And Thank you me. added uh, so much of your own stuff to this, the idea of using the hand essentially as a cup. You know, it's kind of a, a, a cups and balls routine with a hand and, and coin and uh, really nice and really clean and, and saying you're a doctor and having that little slight creepiness of the disembodied hand is, uh, is a nice thing. And uh, you added some, uh, some wonderful stuff and did David very proud with that tribute and uh, we absolutely loved it. But, uh, you know, Teller has done an awful lot with coins, so Teller's pretty aware of the moves, although there were some innovations in there that were really, really beautiful. So, um, so we loved it, but we don't think you fooled us. Okay, Does let's... it sound like they figured out your method? I'm sure they know. It was a pleasure to be here. Aww. Wonderful to have you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Dr. Thank you. Michael Rubenstein.